Osio, I'm Toju Sakura, and I will be your host for this webinar. I'd like to welcome our special guest, Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr., and Cherokee Nation at Large Tribal Council members, Dr. Julia Coates and Mr. Johnny Kidwell. A special welcome to Brian Hale from the Cherokee Nation Health Services and Jessica Lewandowski from the Patient Experience Team. Before we get started, I want to thank the Cherokee Pins Project Foundation for sponsoring tonight's webinar. Welcome, everyone. Dr. Julia Coates, I'll hand things over to you. Hi. Wow, it's great to see so many people on this uh, on this webinar this evening for our town hall. Uh, I think this is the most that we've ever had uh, in one um, in one time here. Um, I'm looking among all the names. There's Chief Hoskin. Uh, Chief Hoskin, I will invite you to um, say a few words for us uh, tonight. If you would like to start out, we'd be honored to hear from you. Well, Counselor, thank you very much. I'm traveling right now, so I'm just going to connect by audio. Um, but I just wanted to briefly share a few remarks. First of all, thanks to all the participants. I was noticing that uh, participant list, and it's very, very large list. I think that's wonderful. And thanks to you and your colleague, Counselor Kidwell, for having this. I know it's not the first virtual uh, meeting that you've conducted. I think over a period of years, uh, there have been different topics. But this is certainly an important one, and I'm glad that uh, you are, you two are getting everybody together virtually to talk about health care. One message I wanted to share with the participants in particular is that the progress that we've been able to make on health care services uh, and outreach to at-large citizens has really been driven by advocacy by your at-large council members. And the topic tonight, I think, that includes the, the patient experience team. The patient experience team was really born out of conversations uh, that at-large council members initiated. So I did want to share with the at-large citizens that are uh, participating tonight that there is progress that can be made to, uh, uh, with elected officials working together, listening to each other, and that's certainly what the deputy chief and I uh, try to do with your at-large council members. So mostly thank you for everyone participating. Thanks to the at-large council members for hosting this, and thanks to them for the progress that we've been able to make. I think that uh, as people get to know more about the patient experience team, the more they'll see the value in it. And then lastly, we also have to recognize that we've got a lot more work to do on health, both within the reservation and certainly at large, finding ways to do more outreach, perhaps extend more services over time, perhaps look more at telemedicine or the barriers to telemedicine that we might be able to uh, reduce in order to extend health care. So thank you all. I'll turn it back over to you, Council Lady, and thank you so much for letting me share just a few comments. What do? We really appreciate your presence here tonight, Chief. We, um, I think this is the first time you've uh, been on one of these, and we're very, very honored that you uh, have joined us here. Uh, and you're correct. This is just for everyone's information. We've had uh, a number of these over the years. Um, I will turn it over to Councillor Kidwell here in just a second, but uh, to say that he is the second counselor that I've done these with. Um, Councillor Mary Baker Shaw and I did several of these, and those were all throughout the COVID era. And we had Dr. Gan, Dr. Gan and um, Lisa Pivik on with us um, probably half a dozen times. Uh, over the months as we were, you know, dealing with the pandemic and getting updated information and everyone was concerned about what was happening back home. And so, um, so that's been a lot of what we've done through these. But uh, some of you were on the one uh, about three months ago when we heard from uh, Cherokee Federal and about employment opportunities uh, with CNB and that was Councillor Kidwell's idea and he took the lead on that one and uh, had a really fantastic offering this time. So we're really happy to be um, out of the COVID era and uh, branching out into additional things uh, at this time. Councillor Kidwell, I'll ask you to, uh, to share some thoughts with us tonight as well. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I, I appreciate that. And, and obviously, Chief, thank you for uh, popping on here and, and, uh, and sharing a few words. Uh, you know, th these, these are important and these are, this is a great way for at-large citizens to get together. 
uh, Dr. Coach, thanks for, you know, utilizing the PINS uh, project here to help to help get this going. Um, you know, the, tonight's topic on the patient experience team, I think is every, everyone on here, I think right now we've got 75 and we had uh, over almost 300 that were signed up. So I'm sure we'll see those kind of flow through as we go. The good thing is, as you've already noted, uh, that this will be recorded. Uh, so folks, uh, don't, don't think that you have to take notes today. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, to re-listen to this uh, w when you need to. We'll make sure that we get this pushed out via social media uh, once we get this all recorded. But the patient experience team, I think is uh, people are going to be enlightened by this today. You know, this, as, as Chief mentioned earlier, it did, uh, this team really was born uh, from a few CCO at-large meetings uh, that, that we had had, uh, I don't know, two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago. And, and it, if for for my part, and I'm I'm not speaking. I, I don't want to speak for uh, for Doctor Coach or or Chief, but for my part, it 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 came about from many at large citizens that were wanting to uh, were wanting to come back to the reservation uh, uh, jurisdiction area and avail themselves of, of the different things that we had already expanded for at large citizens, uh, namely the the prescription the eyeglasses. Uh, the, that voucher program, the hearing aid program that we expanded not just a couple of years ago, uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, prescription drugs, which if you're seen by a Cherokee Nation um, a doctor will, will uh, mail order your prescription drugs to you, where, wherever, you wherever you live. So, you know, they were wanting to get back here. And, and, and you know, if, if you think about it, man, hey, I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I know how hard it is for me to make a, make phone calls back to our Cherokee Nation Health Services and try to get these appointments set up and get these, figure out these hurdles and where, where what I can do and what I can't do. So, man, I, you know, hearing from, uh, you know, elders and veterans and those in need in different states, say California or North Carolina or uh, even Texas, uh, you know, even, even a higher hurdle for them uh, to try to make all that happen. The patient experience team is kind of born out of that idea as well. That was one of the many things that that they were uh, kind of created to to help at large citizens do. So not only are they are they there to help help navigate our healthcare system, they're there to help navigate any healthcare opportunities that that uh, at large citizens might have in their area that they may or may not know about. So and they're doing a great they're, they're doing a great great job. I have had nothing but um, amazing uh, responses uh, for Jessica and 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 her team, and I'm really looking forward to. Uh, you know, all of these uh, 75, 100, 200, however many we have uh, at large citizens to be able to hear directly from them. And and, and please, as I was already already said, please put your comments, your questions in the, in the chat and we will uh, surely uh, uh, get to those as, as best we can. But uh, other than that, everyone, thanks for being on, on board today. And uh, I'm looking forward to a great meeting. All right. Thank you, Councillor Kidwell. I really, uh, I really enjoy serving with Councillor Kidwell. I'm, I'll just say that to everybody who's here tonight. It's he's, he's been just on fire since the day he stepped foot in office, and he's uh, keeping me on my toes too. So, uh, it's great to, to have this collaboration that we've got going on at this time. And he's absolutely correct about the need for this. And so, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over. Uh, to Jessica Lewandowski from the Patient Experience Team and Brian Hale from the Cherokee Nation Health Services. Thank you, both of you, for being with us tonight. We're eager to hear what you have to say. Thank you um, very much, Councillor Coates. We do have a, a PowerPoint presentation. If you're able to uh, make me able to share my screen, and I'll put that up for everybody. Uh, my apologies. For whatever reason, my camera has stopped working, so I can't... Uh, Put my video up. Okay, can you all see the PowerPoint presentation, the, the first one? No. Okay. Sean, are you able to uh, make Brian a host so he can, or however, you whatever you need to do so he can share his screen? Brian has been made a co-host. 
Okay, how about now? No. Well, I am not sure what to do at this point. Jessica, do you have the PowerPoint over on your computer so you can present it maybe? I do. I can try seeing if um, I can share. What I've got, it's showing that only one participant can share at a time. I don't know if that impacts this. There we go. Oh, okay. I see Brian. How about now? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Well, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. My name is Brian Hale, and I serve as the Deputy Executive Director for Cherokee Nation Health Services. And tonight, I'm going to give you a brief overview of who we are, what we've achieved, and where we want to go next. Um, we have an unwavering commitment to provide quality health care to our citizens, and our vision is healthy Cherokee people, families, and communities for this and future generations. That vision, along with our mission and values, uh, really serves as the foundation for everything that we do. Our reservation is made up of 14 counties where we operate the largest tribal health system in the United States. Last year, we provided over 1.6 million patient visits last year across our health system, which encompasses WW Hastings Hospital here in Tahlequah, as well as nine outpatient health centers, including our newest facility, which is the Cherokee Nation Outpatient Health Center here in our Tahlequah Health Campus. Our health system is accredited by DNV, um, and our quality management system is ISO 9001 certified. Um, that helps us assure safe, high quality care with a focus on continual improvement. So a challenge faced by American Indians in the United States is in part due to geographical distances to healthcare facilities. And so to address this disparity, Cherokee Nation's long range health plan identified a scope of services needed in the reservation to achieve our goals of seamless healthcare delivery that's close to home. We want to provide a seamless healthcare system where primary and tertiary facilities really complement each other so that we can offer state of the art, comprehensive care to our citizens in an efficient and coordinated manner. And secondly, we strategically located health centers so that no matter where you are on the reservation, it's a 30 minute drive or less to our health centers. And so some key initiatives to include to achieve these goals included hiring physicians, advanced practice providers and support staff, as well as the building of new health facilities and upgrading existing ones. So to achieve these goals, we focused on increasing third party revenue advocating for the reopening of the joint venture construction program with the Indian Health Service, as well as the investment of tribal business revenue directly into new and expanded health centers. And so I'd like to show you the results of some of our efforts so far. This is Dr. Beth Harp, and she's a Cherokee Nation citizen from Westville, Oklahoma, which is a small town just east of Tahlequah. Dr. Harp graduated from the Oklahoma State University Medical School in Tulsa, and then came to our family medicine residency to complete her training. And she now serves as our executive medical director for the health system. And she's just one example of the successes we've had and are building upon with the residency, partnerships for specialties, and the OSU College of Osteopathic Medicine at the Cherokee Nation. Another success towards achieving our vision is our joint venture. Really the anchor of our campus is W.W. Hastings Hospital, which is the hospital operated by the Cherokee Nation after we assumed it from the Indian Health Service in 2008. So back in 2013, we recognized that Hastings was in dire need of expansion. It was designed to accommodate 60,000 patient visits a year, but was back in 2013, taking care of upwards of 500,000 visits a year. So through a joint venture with the Indian Health Service, we built the Cherokee Nation Outpatient Health Center and this facility is the largest joint venture project awarded by the Indian Health Service and is the largest tribal outpatient health center to date. And this facility alone represents a $200 million investment in health by Cherokee Nation with another $60 million to equip this facility. Our joint venture with the Indian Health Service is 469,000 square feet. To give you a little idea, Hastings Hospital, which you know previously housed all of our inpatient and outpatient services, was right around 186,000 square feet for all of that. So the joint venture serves as the primary access to health care for American Indians and Alaska Natives that reside in the Tahlequah service area. It provides primary medical and dental care with integrated behavioral health and a complement of medical specialties with support from imaging and laboratory services. And with this facility, we no longer have to refer out all of our MRI exams because we have two MRI units here 
and sometimes we have to run those in the evening and on weekends to keep up with the demand. And also to support our expansion of neurological and stroke care, we've just added an MRI at Hastings, which brings us now to three MRI units on this campus. And the construction of this health center has been an economic boon for the region, creating 350 construction jobs. And then we have an additional 850 new healthcare jobs over the next five to 10 years. And really without this facility during the pandemic, we would not have had adequate space to care for everyone or to provide vaccinations. We would have had to have set up tents in our parking lot without this joint venture. So in our investments and partnerships don't just benefit the Cherokee Nation, we also have affiliation agreements that bring optometry to our health centers while providing educational opportunities to optometry students at Northeastern State University. So I had told you earlier that part of our strategic plan was to locate health centers so that anyone within the reservation was within a 30 minute drive of healthcare. But that then creates a challenge because you have to locate a health center in a rural setting, you then have to staff it. And as you probably already know, Oklahoma, and in particular rural Oklahoma, where many tribal citizens live, faces some of the worst health challenges of anywhere in the United States. We rank 46th in the number of primary care doctors per capita. And as a state, we perpetually come in last in almost every metric used for measuring health. In the most recent state of the state's health report card, the only measure we received an A for as a state was the number of seniors receiving the flu vaccine. And that is an important measure that saves a lot of lives, but our performance in every other measure, such as heart disease, smoking, obesity, and infant mortality really overshadow that single A on the state's report card. So because of those challenges, tribes really began to lead the way in solving rural health problems. And for us, we started working with partners like Oklahoma State University to train physicians in Tahlequah at the very first medical school on tribal land. And we looked to OSU because they've been focusing on rural health for decades as well. And we recognized a solution, educate and train the folks that grew up and live in our communities to take care of those communities. And so what started off with us hosting some medical students for clinical rotations evolved into our own family medicine residency in partnership with OSU. And it was natural to build off that success. And by partnering with OSU to establish this medical school in Tahlequah, we will train doctors more likely to stay and practice in tribal health. We believe that no other single investment can positively impact the quality of life and economic development of rural communities more than medical education. Cherokee Nation built this medical school so OSU can bring medical education to Tahlequah, to Cherokee Nation, and to tribal land. And one thing that's been a challenge to get folks to understand is that you don't have doctors ready to go after four years of medical school. They have to finish their training by going to a residency for their specialty training. And we now have the family medicine and pediatric residencies here. And across the street, the municipal hospital has an internal medicine residency. Our next step is working with OSU to add new residencies so that new physicians have somewhere to finish their training and to finish it in Indian country. Because we know that roughly 86% of physicians will stay within 50 miles of where they finish their training at. So it's really important to have the medical school and the residency so that we keep more doctors practicing in tribal health. So when we opened our new joint venture outpatient health center on the Tahlequah campus, we continued to provide inpatient services at Hastings Hospital, which is now around 40 years old. And just for a little context, the age of most healthcare facilities in the country is about nine years. So it's well past the average age. Our inpatient care is still provided in the older hospital where we have our medical surgical unit, our intensive care unit, labor and delivery, our emergency department. And we've also used some of that vacated outpatient space at Hastings to bring medication assisted treatment for substance use disorder to more patients. Our hospital has really seen consistent growth in labor and delivery, and the emergency department is very busy as well. Labor and delivery has long been a flagship service for Hastings, and as many rural hospitals have stopped providing labor and delivery care, we've had to expand this department, but we're still in need of yet more space to accommodate more deliveries. Another reason we've seen growth in labor and delivery is our achieving certification is baby friendly, which means we focus on immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact between the mother and her baby, as well as encouraging and supporting breastfeeding. And during the pandemic, we realized we needed to expand our inpatient capacity because we couldn't always rely on being able to transfer higher acuity patients. The need for more beds, especially critical care and labor and delivery 
really drove us to undertake a new hospital on the campus. And so we're currently constructing a new hospital that will attach via SkyBridge to the new outpatient health center. This represents a $400 million investment and will bring 400,000 square feet of space to house a new emergency department as well as 127 inpatient beds. And this will allow us to, gr to accommodate the growth in labor and delivery as and provide the same high quality care, but in an updated and modern facility. I'm trying to advance my slide, it won't. Here we go. So we're also increasing access to care in places like Salina. This is our Salina Health Center where we're investing $35 million in a new, actually that's now up to $50 million for a new health center to replace the current one. This new facility will triple the amount of space that we have and also will, will incorporate a wellness facility. We've seen time and time again that we can't wait for someone else to solve our problems and that by partnering, we can make things happen that otherwise wouldn't. So I wanna, Thank you all for taking the time to listen to who we are and where we want to go. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Jessica Lewandowski to talk about the patient experience team. What -o. Thank you. So like Brian said, there are a lot of exciting healthcare initiatives underway on the reservation, and our efforts don't just stop there. Thanks to adv advocacy and support from your counselors, Chief Hoskin and administration, CNHS was able to implement the patient experience team last year. Our two primary objectives include improving experience and satisfaction for CNHS patients and increasing access to healthcare for at-large citizens. Our team has been in action for about a year now, and so far we have provided individualized healthcare navigation assistance to over 1,700 Cherokee citizens. Next slide, please. Serving at-large Cherokees is a priority for our team, and we have several initiatives geared towards this. We engage in outreach events like this and attend all at-large gatherings to provide education about our team's services and tribal healthcare options. We have a phone line and email open to all Cherokees seeking healthcare navigation assistance, and we'll be sharing that on the next slide. But to start your healthcare journey, uh, all your navigation journey, you just need to reach out to us anytime you need assistance, and we'll work with you to find the most convenient path to address your needs. Our team can provide education on the care provided by CNHS, and there are a wide variety of services and programs available through CNHS for at-large citizens. For example, you can receive your primary care, dental, optometry, audiology, and a number of other services at one of our healthcare centers. If you'd like to travel to CNHS, we can help coordinate your appointments so that you can receive multiple treatments in one trip and minimize your time traveling away from home. We do know that, of course, travel is not always an option for everyone, so we also collaborate with other tri tribal healthcare facilities to identify opportunities for you to receive your care at a location that is closer to your home. Next slide, please. So as I referenced, the first step to receiving assistance is reaching out. And please save this contact information so that you can have it on hand whenever you may need it. And also please feel free to share it with anyone else who may need it as well. Our team is really passionate about what we do and we enjoy uh, helping you all out. So please feel free to reach out. Um, and that, that concludes our presentation. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions and. Like I said, uh, I look forward to, to hearing from you guys. Okay, I, um, <laughs> can we take the screen down? Yeah, thank you very much. All right, thank you for, for that presentation. I think that um, we have uh, solicited questions from people in advance of this um, tonight. And so I'll uh, go into some of those. And then if there are additional questions that people have, you can put them in the chat. And I think Councillor Kidwell uh, will be uh, managing the ones that come in tonight. Um, one. 
I think the questions that I've received, I'll just say some of them are very specific. They're about something that happened to that individual or a personal circumstance that they're asking. And I'm not going to go into those, you know, this evening, but I will get some of those to you or to um, Mr. Hale or Dr. Jones or someone, whoever is appropriate. Yeah, please feel free, if anything is um, a very niche situation to an individual, send it to mm -hmm. our team and, and we'd be happy to look into okay. it. Okay, yeah. I will, there are some that kind of have fallen into, I, I can generalize a little bit more and they've kind of fallen into more general categories. And so several of them are about the Affordable Care Act and people asking uh, about this from someone in Florida, for instance, who is asking um, about, about this, that work, they said they worked with an agent who seemed to have very limited knowledge of the Affordable Care Act in the tribal space. And so some of the specific things about that act. Um, and I'll just throw that one out there for, for, for now, I guess. Uh, are, are people able to come to you as well for, um, you know, advice and, and assistance in, in helping to find those kinds of things that are specific for American Indians under the ACA? Yeah, so we have patient benefit coordinators, um, PBCs for short. They are experts in the space of uh, the Affordable Care Act, insurance coverage options, all, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, that kind of thing. Um, one thing I would advise too, uh, oftentimes other tribal healthcare systems will have similar uh, positions to help people navigate just because ours are mainly focused on Oklahoma. So there are state specific options as well that sometimes might be a better fit. So we can reach out, um, you know, depending on where they are, figure out if there's another tribal healthcare system that all, also provides uh, PBC services. Uh, okay. Brian, do you have anything to add to that? I don't. We have some uh, PBCs, though, that are really expert at navigating that system and providing good advice to folks. Um, I don't. Would they be able to, um, because as I understand it, people in different states are going to have different plans available to them um, through their state exchange. Um, are they able to uh, advise people uh, in terms in terms of the state exchanges as well by any chance or to assist them to uh, people in the various states that may have uh, the the knowledge of the tribal spe tribally specific aspects um so i think that's an instance you know we could reach out to another tribe and from that state to see if they have the expertise but if for whatever reason there there are a few states that don't have tribal health care facilities, um, I believe that our PBCs, uh, the marketplace is is nationwide, and I, I believe so they could help navigate that portion of it. Thank you. Um, I have some, I think there is some confusion about, uh, well, I don't, confusion is I'm trying to, to lump these questions into general categories, so I'm sort of thinking on the fly here, but uh, it's not confusion perhaps, but there are questions, and, and this may be something that actually Chief Hoskin could jump in on as well. Uh, I know that I've worked probably three different times over the years that I've been on council on initiatives or have been in discussions at least about uh, the Cherokee Nation offering some kind of an insurance plan of its own. And so uh, there are questions that have come in that that would kind of fall under that. People are wondering uh, if they have private health insurance, if they can get health insurance from the Cherokee Nation as either a primary or secondary. Uh, and and we don't have that, of course. So, so Chief, yeah, if you would jump in, that'd be great. Well. Th thank you for that. And that question does come up a lot. The last time that there was some real study uh, on the subject by the Cherokee Nation was prior to the Affordable Care Act. And at that time, it didn't look like the, the, the math worked out, so to speak, in terms of an insurance pool. And there was also at that time, and there continues to be some state line barriers 
providing insurance. So even though we have a nationwide insurance exchange, insurance is still very much state specific. And you may have giant companies that uh, span the country, but they're uh, operating within the various states. So I still think there's a lot of barriers. I, I can't say that we've studied the economics recently, uh, but I do think that that's uh, still a, a challenge for us. And I don't think that in the near term, uh, we're going to be uh, providing an insurance plan. But, you know, it may be worth reviewing again. Um, but I do think there's some real challenges in terms of state lines uh, and just having a pool of people that uh, would uh, make insurance work because, of course, that's that's what insurance is, is a, a risk pool. So uh, nothing nothing real encouraging to report, I'm afraid, but I did, did want to share those uh, comments. Yeah, I know in every discussion I've been in, probably, as I said, three different groups probably over the years, that's, those have always been the barriers. Yeah, so, and, and continue to be. Um, so another question, and Jessica, you've kind of touched on this, but I, I wondered if you could maybe go into a little bit more detail. Are all U.S. tribes health services available to all tribal members? So unfortunately, there's not a straightforward answer to this question. Um, based off of the facility and um, the tribe, you know, that's one reason why we we note with the questions to ask, you know, how to reach out and find this information. But, you know, different programs, even within a health system, some can be available to all members or, or all members of any tribe. Some might be available to tribal members who live in a certain area, and some might be just available to a certain tribe. So unfortunately, there's not a, a clear cut uh, yes, no to that question. It varies based off of the facility. But uh, again, you know, we'd be happy to do that digging for you and find out exactly what services are available where. Um, or if there's, a, you know, you can come to us if you want to find a certain service, we can find the closest one available to you or just find out what services are available at the closest facility to you. Uh, I will say that if it's an Indian Health Service operated facility, their care is available to any member of a federally recognized tribe. But Jessica is absolutely right in some of the tribally operated programs, and, and I really think it's just a few of them, they limit it to just their citizens, but the overwhelming majority of the larger tribal health systems will take care of any member of a federally recognized tribe. And this is a little bit related to that, this question, but it, the question is, if someone uh, is utilizing the health services of, a, of another tribe uh, in an area where they live, can they also travel to some other area and utilize uh, the system of that tribe as well? And that's probably also it, an it depends kind of response. Hmm? Um, they're not mutually exclusive. So you can be seen uh, by our tribe, you can be seen um, by the Creeks or wherever you may be. Um, so you can visit multiple healthcare systems. So this is from someone in Tucson, and she says, I can use them in Tucson and Phoenix, but can I use them in, you know, South Dakota, if I happen to be visiting there? And mm -hmm. so. Absolutely, yeah. She could come visit us if we have a service that they don't offer, um, and, and vice versa. Um, this one would probably be more specific to people who are uh adjacent to the Cherokee Nation Reservation, but it's asking about uh, if someone is utilizing our facilities or maybe Creek Nation, Nation facilities uh, and they have to be taken somewhere by ambulance for emergency services. This is sort of a contract health question, but Jessica, I have a feeling, and, and Brian too for that matter, that uh, this one is not that complex and you may be able to respond to it. So contract health funds, um, to determine whether or not you're eligible for those, that does depend upon where you live. And every tribe has has different requirements for that as well. So um, the, the first question would be to determine which uh, contract health or purchased and referred care 
area they live in and then co correspond with that tribe to determine if that uh, instance would be covered or not. And uh, the telehealth nurse line pharmacy through the mail remotely accessed PT slash OT or any other home delivered services available. That's the extent of the question. And so some yes, some no. Can you sort of address that a little bit as well? Yeah, so we're able to do telemedicine uh, for residents of Oklahoma. And uh, we are able to mail many prescriptions. Um, not everything is able to be mailed though. So you would need to first be seen by a Cherokee Nation provider uh, to determine if, if your prescriptions would be able to be mailed or not. And um, I think, does that, Brian, am I missing anything else that is, um, that can be uh, delivered by home? No, you, you've, you've nailed it. And then uh, I know you put some uh, phone numbers up. So for questions when they come in in the future, uh, that would be the appropriate phone number to use or to use your email at Cherokee.org. And... Absolutely. The the best option is the health at Cherokee.org email and the patient experience team line at 539-234-CARE. Uh, you can reach anyone. Uh, you can reach us at, during the week. Um, eight to five, we'll call you back uh, within a business day. We're very prompt on returning uh, phone calls and emails. And um, yeah, that's a great place to start. And this will be the last one. This is more of a comment and I'll open it up to Chief as well as the two of you to, to address it. This one is from Oklahoma City and it says mental health issues are a major health issue in Cherokee Nation, as we know. Uh, the assistance that is provided through assisted living cannot be provided to some Cherokees because of the extreme cost to some families. This is an issue that needs some discussion among the nation's leaders. So, um, and I guess Johnny and I could be in that uh, bucket of people as well, but, uh, but uh, Chief, maybe you uh, or Mr. Hale, I know there are many plans in the works for this. Uh, if you could just give us a general idea of what might be coming up in terms of, of uh, wellness programs. So as far as wellness programs go, uh, we really have kind of two approaches to that. Uh, public health is in the process of expanding our um, wellness centers to provide more opportunities for uh, recreation and physical activity. And then we're also in the process of developing uh, wellness centers that'll be more focused on helping folks that have substance use disorder. Um, Cherokee Nation Behavioral Health is undertaking a, a pretty good expansion, uh, really trying to provide this entire continuum of care for folks with substance use issues. That's starting with uh, intensive outpatient treatment that we already offer, and that would also include medication-assisted treatment uh, with using medications such as Suboxone to help folks. And then uh, going into, um, you know, we've, we're in the design phase now for a, a residential treatment center that'll be here in Tahlequah and that will offer residential treatment for uh, people with substance use disorder. And then the next step is transitional housing so that people have a, a structured place to go when they successfully finish their residential uh, treatment. And they don't have to go directly back into an environment that, uh, that may not be conducive to their successful recovery. And all that is also paired with um, offerings for adult and in pediatric patients that have uh, behavioral health needs. We now have a psychiatrist on staff for adults, as well as a psychiatrist on staff for pediatrics. And uh, there is a really overwhelming demand for behavioral health. We see that in the Cherokee Nation, and, and we really see that across the across the country. And so we're doing everything that we can to expand those offerings. We've brought in a company called uh, Tribal Health Connections, trying to help with some of the demand that by providing telehealth visits. We're also expanding into some communities so that we can uh, bring needed services, especially related to substance use disorder, directly uh, closer to where those people are in their communities. Okay, thank you very much. 
Councillor Kidwell, I'll turn it over to you. I see, I have seen some things coming up that some of the questions in the chat have been answered, but uh, if there are other things I haven't been able to, to follow it, if there are, are things that you see, please uh, jump in <laughs> well, on those got, as well. Uh, I, I have company here, as, as you can see. Uh, but but some there are some great really good questions that are popping up in the chat. I, I know Jessica and, and Brian are both are both following them. I'll I'll go over a couple of the ones that I uh, you know that are that I'm that I'm kind of seeing, and uh, you know and and again you know the, these are being answered in the chat. If you if anybody wants to pop on there, but um, Katrina's uh, Watson asks, are there dietitians and nutritionists that can work with Cherokee Nation citizens? Um, and uh, she's close to uh, Cherokee, North Carolina, uh, it, it, it appears. So uh, Jessica, I'm, I'm sure you've looked into the, the reservation area out there and what they have available. Is that uh, something that's available to them or, or do we help out with that? Off the top of my head, I am not positive that they have dietitians and nutritionists, but that's something I can absolutely check into. Um, uh, Katrina, if you'd like to send me an email, we'll we'll find the answer for you. And then a, a, another another question came in quickly about um, the the uh, the ob obesity medication like Ozempic. Uh, we're not carrying our formulary doesn't doesn't have Ozempic and Manjoro and those those different types of weight loss uh medicines yet is that true or, or 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 what's our formulary looking like these days that might be more of a brine question we've had some shortages um in the past but we have um we i'll keep an alternative uh to that prescription so if we might not have the exact name brand we will usually have an alternative that can accomplish the same same goal Okay, let, let's let's walk the dog on, on that, if you would, so that we don't give people a, a misconception. Mm -hmm. If if I'm if I'm living in I don't know Oklahoma City, and my doctor prescribes me Ozempic, um, I can't go get that filled through the Cherokee Nation pharmacy. No, to get a right? prescription filled through Cherokee Nation, you do need to see a Cherokee Nation Health Services provider, and our right. providers are uh, well versed of our formulary and what's available and what requirements are needed to qualify for that prescription. Right. Yeah. People need to, people need to, we've had a problem with this in, in the past and it's, and it, listen, it's, and it's not, it's not because the Cherokee nation doesn't want to be helpful. That that's, that's not the case at all. Um, uh, much of the I, IHS uh, medical funding and, and different things that we receive for those drugs uh, you know, you, you have to be seen by one of our doctors and so when we say that the Cherokee Nation will give you mail order, mail order your prescription drugs, really what we're saying is that if you come back and you're seen by a Cher Cherokee Nation doctor, right, then we, no matter where you're at, we'll mail that to you then. But we won't accept right now your prescription from, uh, you know, San Diego, California. Um, but it is something I know that we're, we are looking into. And I think Brian might be able to, uh, to speak a little bit toward this, but uh, especially through the IHS system, being able to uh, have reciprocity for different um, uh, medical prescriptions that might be out there. I, I know that we're looking at different avenues to be able to expand the way that we're able to uh, help at-large citizens. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a no for today, but that does not mean that it'll be a no in the future. We are working hard to try to, to try to expand this process. Yes. That's correct. And, and really, the, the biggest obstacle is if the patient is in another state, typically the provider that they are going to see has to be licensed in that state. And, and that's really kind of the biggest hurdle that we have. And um, we do have some providers that are licensed in other states, but it, it's nothing that we can really kind of go live with because one provider licensed in one state would not be able to take care of all the patients that are going to be in that state, if that makes sense. And so we're, I will tell you that, you know, this is a, a priority that we're paying attention to and trying to find a way to get to the point where we can provide more services to folks that are at large. 
Right. Yeah, I appreciate you speaking to that. Cassandra uh, asked a question there. She says, is there a cap on income eligibility for Native American health? Uh, she says she can't get an answer for that. She's talked to a few different people, I guess. And, you know, everybody lives in different areas. As far as I, you know, you can speak to this, Jessica, but as far as I know, um, unless now if you're on the Native American benefit plan uh, inside the Affordable Care Act, there is there are there are income levels, but there's no cap. No, you can receive a uh, no cost treatment regardless of, of your income. That's for direct services. Yes, yes, I should clarify. If you're going to an Indian Health Services facility, direct services at an IHS facility would be no cost regardless of your income. Let's see. Uh, here, here's a pretty direct question. I, I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, if someone lives in Tulsa, um, uh, near, say, St. Francis, if an ambulance takes them to, to a Tulsa hospital where the Cherokee Nation reimbursed them? So since they live in Tulsa, uh, they would not fall within Cherokee Nation's purchased and referred care area. So we would not be able to reimburse. However, Brian, do you know um, if, if Tulsa is covered by another tribe's purchased and referred care? Well, it depends on where in Tulsa. Um, Tulsa is typically split into roughly three different, um, what we call purchased and referred care delivery areas. Uh, parts of Tulsa are covered by Cherokee Nation. Parts are covered by Muscogee Nation, and then a portion of it is covered by Claremore Indian um, Hospital. And so it, it really is kind of driven by um, where the patient resides. We, hey, uh, Jessica, if you would, in the chat, would you just one, one time in the chat, I know you had it up on the screen before, but would you put the email and the telephone number in that chat just so people can have that I, there's a few questions absolutely, you know, look, absolutely. Look at I'll, numbers. I'll send that right now let's see here um do you know of any uh do you know of any um facilities in man I, I know that they're i know that you have the indian health center in there in dallas but is there anything uh, further south that you know of? There is um, with the Alabama Cushada tribe in Livingston, Texas, um, is one I know of off the top of my head. Um, and I think there might be another. Um, okay. I apologize. And th 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 those those questions are easily answered via email. If, if someone would, you know, if we can, uh, we've got all that information out there. It'd be good to uh, to send those to you. Um, let's see. Let's see. You want to see a doctor there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone. Let's see. Mer Meryl Smith uh, up in Oregon. So she says. So I. So can I assume once seeing a doctor there? Uh, I'm assuming that means on on Cherokee Nation reservation land. Um, uh, she would have to return every year to update that prescription, right? For her to, for those drugs to continue being mail ordered to her. Is that true? So, um, and Brian, you might be able to expand on this a little more, but I believe it would depend on the prescription, the frequency of when she would need to return. Um, am I correct in that, Brian? Yes, some medications would require an in-person visit with the provider in order to um, allow for the refills, and, and some there's a little more leeway. There's also been some leeway with, you know, some of the pandemic regulations and some of those have expired and some are about to expire. So it's really going to be kind of a case by case basis. Yeah, Brian, and not to get on a soapbox here, that, that's not really what this thing is about. But, you know, the VA, you know, I, I go to the VA once a year and, uh, you know, whatever it is they think I need, I, you know, they just keep on sending it to me after I've seen them for, for that one year. And, and obviously whatever I'm, whatever they're giving me doesn't meet that, uh, meets, meets that one year requirement, but they seem to do that, uh, do that pretty well. 
Yes, um, middle a uh, mental incapacitation. Are services currently provided for assisted living? Currently, we do not cover assisted living um, or long term rehabilitation. Um, at this time, that's that's not a service we're able to to provide or cover. Let's see, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Melissa, what tribe covers OSU? Are you Melissa? Do you mean Oklahoma State University? Is that maybe Melissa's not on there anymore? But I don't. You know, that's not on Osage land, is it? Is that uh, we're up in Stillwater? Is that? I'm not positive off the top of my head what tribal land that is on. Uh, let's see. Sarah Stern says this Cherokee Nation Health Service work in tandem with urban Indian health organizations. So urban Indian health organizations um, fall under that IHS umbrella. Typically, they're embedded within another health care facility, but the services that are provided by that urban facility uh, would be no cost. Typically, there'll be a coordinator or someone there that can provide additional information about what services you can get at that location for no cost. Or that's um, something we can Jeanette, look into as well. Yeah, Jeanette uh, Bowers Weaver, she she brings up a good a good question that we get quite often, and I, I know you get it as well. Uh, but you know, for people that live say out of state, she's she happens to be in Washington State, uh, where there's nothing there. Um, uh, could she fly in here and receive care, um, or would or would some of that care be be restricted based to, based on residency? And Brian Hill I already that, replied yeah. that they have no restriction for direct. I can service. say that we have um, a fair number. We have a fair number of folks that you know. For instance, they come into uh, Tahlequah once a year for the Cherokee National Holiday. And while they're here, they, you know, have appointments to get all of their kind of routine medical care taken care of. And so, no, we we do not have any restrictions as far as uh, direct services. The, really, the restrictions get into when we get into contract health or what's also known as purchased and referred care. That's where, where people live becomes um, a challenge for everybody to deal with. Yeah, for example, they have to be sent out to see a specialist. And that specialist is somebody out, outside of our system. That becomes pretty dicey. And typically the answer is no uh, for reimbursement for at-large citizens, correct? And that is typically correct. There, and what I will also add, though, is that we have added several specialties that are now direct services. So, for instance, cardiology and neurology. We now have here... Um, at the uh, outpatient health center here in Tahlequah. So more and more specialties we're able to provide as a direct service. And if there's a um, specific service that someone is looking for, like I said, they can reach out anytime and we can let them know if that's something we would be able to provide or if that would be considered an external referral. Hey, Brian, you, you might be able to speak to this when, uh, because I know we've just we've just ventured into some partnerships with uh, for cancer treatment, but it's uh, uh, but the question is does Cherokee Nation have treatment facility for cancer and to get medications, um, uh, uh, to get medication you need to be treated there, correct? Or can the uh, or can that be worked out with IHS? So what 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 is the partnership we have we recently signed? If you can explain that about cancer treatment. Or, or our or our, our movement toward it. I mean, we don't provide it now, but I know what I know we've been looking forward to that. Right. And so currently, if someone has a cancer diagnosis and they're receiving care with us, we're going to refer them somewhere. We're going to refer them to a uh, to someone who specializes in cancer care. And a lot, you know, one of the main reasons is a lot of those medications are really specialized and and can be difficult to handle. They have some specialty requirements. So to uh, bring in a, a really comprehensive uh, cancer center into the area. We have partnered with Mercy Health 
uh, specifically with Mercy Fort Smith, and uh, we are partnering with them to help them construct a, a comprehensive cancer care center in Fort Smith, Arkansas, that'll be able to serve the needs for a lot of the folks on kind of the eastern side of the reservation um, in those contiguous counties there. And we'll be able to send, you know, really anyone from there, but it'll be especially convenient for folks that live on kind of the eastern side of the reservation. And we're going to have special patient navigators uh, dedicated within the Mercy Cancer Program to specifically help with our patients' uh, navigation needs. And they have committed to a, a five-day turnaround on a referral. So within five days of a referral, they're going to take care of you. But they are still in the construction phase for that. They do have a cancer program in Fort Smith, but they are currently under, under construction for that cancer program in Fort Smith to make it a more comprehensive one. But they do have oncology services available now. Yeah, I know we're putting a lot of money uh, toward that right now, and, and, and rightfully so. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, for, for, for the future, it's going to be good for everybody. Let's see, we went over to cancer. Jessica, do you see any other uh, questions in there that we might have missed? Some, some of your questions, some of the questions are, are very specific to, to, to one person, and those are best, you know, if you could email Jessica, that, that, would, be, that would be great. I'm trying to hit the more general ones for, for, everybody that's, uh, for everybody's edification that's on, uh, still on board here. Um, Johnny, there's let's... one from Rodney Thompson that I think, uh, uh, it's near the bottom of the, it says, how can he coordinate with CN Health with my current Medicare education events in California? I know Mr. Thompson, and uh, he does currently work with the Los Angeles IHS and Las Vegas IHS, currently a Medicare broker specializing with IHS and Medicare education. Um, Jessica, do you have um, an interest in, in that kind of a... Um, of a coordination would there um i could i could speak with our leadership you know and see if that's something we could we could explore and and look into but yes please please reach out and um and we'll see you see what we can do okay thank you perfect uh let's see if a cherokee nation family member travels to an ihs facility uh, uh for well care uh, let's see, uh, will there be a charge for services? And that, that answers is, should be no, uh, uh, right. They should, we, they can be seen at any, uh, anybody, any member of the federally recognized tribe can be seen at IHS facility. Yep. As long as they're, they're a registered member of a federally recognized tribe. Yeah. The medical, uh, Cassandra brings up the, uh, the medical mobile units, you know, we, we've, it's funny, we, we, we've kicked those around for, for a few years. And the, the main hurdle we have uh, that uh, Brian already referred to is that our, our doctors are certified by the state of Oklahoma. So they can't go down to Dallas, Texas and start writing prescriptions, right? That's, uh, that's just the way that that, uh, that's just the way that that works. Now, if we had doctors that were licensed in all those states, that, that might be something different, but uh, I'll let Brian speak to that. Uh, Brian, do you have any other, information i know you you put that in there but uh you know are we uh, you know i know we've kicked around that that medical mobile unit uh a, a few times uh for at large communities and that uh you know you got the the licensing problem you you know you've got that major hurdle you've got just kind of the logistics of of having a you know what a big rv with uh me medical equipment in it and you know, a handful of doctors and nurses and man just start trucking around the country and uh, taking blood pressure, right? Right. Those state licensure requirements and because they kind of differ from state to state are really the biggest hurdle. Um, you know, I, I do think it's an interesting idea. And just like the uh, telehealth, you know, across state lines, we'll continue to, uh, you know, to try and evaluate, you know, where there are opportunities for us to maybe bring more out there. Jessica, do you want to elaborate on the uh, prescription eyeglass voucher program? Like how, yeah. how that works and what, what people yeah, so, can do? Um, just come and be seen by one of our optometrists. Um, they'll write your prescription. 
and then um, you can pick out your glasses and have them mailed to you if you would like. Or um, you can come back and, and pick them up as well, whatever is most convenient. So, but you would need to be seen by a CNHS optometrist to get that process started. And uh, let's see, Barrett Shepard, the hearing aid program is exactly the same way. Uh, exactly. Come on in, you know, uh, call, call Jessica's team, make your appointment, uh, come on over, get seen by a Cherokee Nation uh, um, audiologist and get you a couple of hearing aids, man, if that's what they uh, prescribe. And uh, Dr. Coates and I, uh, you know, two years ago championed the uh, the expansion of that. You know, the uh, odd thing is, is that, uh, uh, you know, at one point in time, but for a couple of years ago, they were only giving out one hearing aid to at-large uh, at -large citizens. One. Doesn't matter if you needed two. Uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, it was, uh, quite a deal, but you know what? We, uh, we quickly, uh, Dr. Coach and I worked with chief and, and Brian and, and, and a whole bunch of other, you know, uh, uh, a whole bunch of pe people there in uh, Cherokee nation healthcare leadership. And we, uh, really, it, it was nothing, it was not, uh, uh, it, it was not nefarious, by any means, by anybody at Cherokee Nation, it was all holdover policy, IHS holdover policy back from whenever, uh, you know, back before we took over Hastings, way, way back. Uh, how, Dr. Coach, what, how many years ago was that? Uh, and and it just was never changed. And no one ever really looked at, you know, we've, I don't know, it was a pretty simple process. Uh, 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 Chief and Deputy Chief Brian Warner and everyone was very quick to, uh, uh, to make that change uh, whenever we uh, whenever we figured that out. And I will also say this, if you don't mind me kind of elaborating on, on this deal, um, those those programs that that we talk about that are uh, expanded to at large citizens, whether it be uh, prescription drug, mail order prescription, prescription drugs, hearing aids, uh, eyeglass vouchers, and basically anything else that we're going to be able to get out to at large citizens, they're they're paid through predominantly with our own money. That isn't money provided by IHS or the federal government. There's a uh, there's a five percent uh, revenue dividend that comes back uh, from our business side to to the Cherokee Nation to be able to support these programs. So when we talk about expanding these programs, the the thing that people need to understand is we need to increase revenue from our businesses to be able to sustain these programs because this isn't federal money that we're talking about. This is our money. Uh, so I hope, hope people understand that. I mean, uh, it, it, that gets, that information gets lost in the shuffle quite often. And uh, that, that's why people, you know, when I talk to at large citizens and, and, and groups, I, I, I like to talk about how these things are funded because it's really an eye opener for, for our citizens. I think most people think, you know, if they're sitting in, Dallas, Texas, or Springfield, Arkansas, or, or Oregon, they think, well, the federal government's given us all this money. We should just get all this for free. That's not true. Uh, that, that is not the way that, that this process works. Uh, the Cherokee Nation is funding these programs for at large through predominantly our own revenue. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you hear us talk about increasing revenue and, and building bigger businesses to be able to support a bigger tribe, that, these are the programs we're talking about. That history courses, language courses, all these things that go out to at our citizens. So I, I, I'll get off my soapbox for a minute. I apologize for taking up too much time there, but I think it's important for uh, those 80, 80 uh, or so people and the people that'll watch this later as we put out the, uh, the, the video, understand how these things are paid for. This isn't, uh, you know, this is our businesses uh, revenue paying for these programs. I, I would echo that because it's it's an extremely frustrating thing to take constituent calls and Jessica, Brian, you know this too, you know, and to just have to say, I'm sorry, you know, um, no, there isn't. And those kinds of responses are not satisfying to uh, the citizens and they're not satisfying to us. But um, I this is something that's on all tribes in this country, you know, it isn't just us. and. And so the fact that we do use our discretionary funds and funding from uh, our businesses and so forth to expand out to the at-large citizens of the Cherokee Nation is, is a special thing, I think, because not all tribes do that. 
And the fact that we do to the extent that we can and that we're looking for additional ways to uh, expand outward all the time, we're looking for that and to make partnerships. And, you know, it, it, it does show that at-large citizens are on the radar. And that's the thing that frustrates me a lot of times when people just say, well, we're just, you know, it just makes us feel like we're second class citizens or something. And it's it's not that at all. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, we're very much in, on the on the radar when it comes to the Cherokee Nation uh, and its leadership. So I do want to to echo that. Um, I think that. Are you, is any, Johnny, anybody, are you seeing additional questions here that uh, additional things to address? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Brian's got a, uh, got a couple of minutes. I think for the most part, uh, we're, we're doing okay. We've got a lot, a lot of folks saying these are great meetings, man. Hey, we, uh, we appreciate the feedback. We're going to try to, uh, Dr. Coach, well, we try to do this once a quarter, um, uh, you know, so we're going to try to, you know, set up something else. I would, I would say also email, uh, Dr. Coates and I, if you if there's a topic that you would like to have on these uh, for these meetings in the future, uh, we're always looking for uh, you know to, to to meet your needs. I mean, we're we're here for you guys. We're, we're we try to be your voice and and do do as much for you as we can. If there's something specific that you'd like to have one of these virtual town halls on one topic in particular, please let us know. Reach out to us. I'll put my contact information in the uh in the chat here so that everybody has that and man we look forward to hearing from you and this meeting has been recorded tonight and uh in, within probably 10 days to two weeks uh we will have a link to that it will be up on the cherokee pins website and then counselor kidwell and i will both send it out to our lists and and uh it can be shared around and jessica if you'd like to uh, i'll I, I won't say if you'd like to, I will send you <laughs> that link when also when we get it. So um, so if that's everything for tonight, we want to thank you, Jessica and Brian, very much. We really appreciate all the information that you've shared with us and your willingness to, to be here tonight. And we thank everyone who's participated on this. Counselor Kidwell, a pleasure as always working with you. And... Um, We'll call it a night, I guess. Thank you, Sean, also for hosting us and for, for working with us on the technology. My gosh, almost forgot that. And, and Sean makes it all happen for us. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. Well, special thank you to the Cherokee Pins Project Foundation for sponsoring tonight's webinar. And as Dr. Julia Coates said, that tonight's presentation will be recorded and will be available on the Cherokee Pins YouTube channel.